Welcome to uh, the Observator Finansowy Studio. It's great pleasure to be here with you. What is so special about Central Europe? Good question. <laughs> yeah, I think if we, if we approach it from an economic point of view, then it's really differing from, from the other parts of Europe, from Western Europe. So I, we can see many similarities between, uh, especially between the Visegrad countries, uh, Poland, Czechia, Slovakia and Hungary. Uh, in terms of their economic structure, in terms of their development path, in, in terms of their uh, inherited structures and uh, their past as uh, planned economies, uh, I think which all had an impact on la their later developments. But by now, I think there are s some signs of increasing heterogeneity among these countries uh, of the region as well. Uh, so, for example, their uh, reliance on foreign direct investments, their reliance on government, government intervention into the economies is, is now quite uh, different. What are the biggest challenges the Visegrad countries face today? I think their kind of uh, foreign exposure is quite high, maybe with the exception of Poland. And I think ownership matters. So, uh, as I see the emergence of Polish multinationals, I think that's very important to have your own very competitive companies who are so competitive that they are able to invest abroad. Uh, we have some signs that there are good competitive multinationals in Czechia in a special construction because many Czech multinationals have their seats abroad, not in Czechia. Um, and I think Hungary has some good multinationals, a few of them, very much concentrated outside uh, activities. Slovakia is, I think, the least uh, competitive from that point of view. I think, it's, I think ownership matters. So it's good to have your own companies who are competitive enough because you can uh, become independent of what, more or less, of what's going on in the world and in your most important partner countries, and you can have your own strategy. Uh, while if you are very much exposed to foreign companies, then this is multinational companies or foreign partners, this is less true. So um, does it mean that we should support our local industry to feel secure and to boost our growth? Uh, I think that's a kind of double-edged sword. We, also, we always have a problem with supporting. Uh, it's always problematic to select the winners. Uh, it's always problematic to select national champions and so on. So there are many risks in that selection, but it seems that the world is going towards uh, more intensive industrial policies, more intensive support for domestic companies, and, uh, and you cannot be left out from that uh, development. And there, there are, I think, many responsibilities and risks for the government to, uh, to continue such a strategy. Sometimes I think uh, that uh, Southern Korea is a paragon of such a policy that uh, do you think it's possible we may follow their policy? I think South Korea uh, was much more lucky in terms of timing. So when South Korea emerged as, with a very uh, strong state intervention as, a, as a, uh, an emerging country uh, and an industrialized country, that was in times when um, there were less strict uh, global and international rules about state support, about state support to exporting companies and so on. So in that sense, they were much luckier in terms of timing. Uh, nowadays, I think much more difficult. The, the, it is much more constrained. Uh, but still, it seems that there is a revival in state intervention. But I wanted to emphasize that I'm not uh, fully and without any doubts supportive of such policies because I come from a, I was born in, in a socialist planned economy, Hungary, and I saw how markets can be a better mean for economic development than a, a planned uh, economy system. Today we may observe that the world is in the state of turmoil. How may the protracting war in Ukraine and clashes between uh, Palestinians and Israel affect today's world? Not only 
economy, but policy as well. Yeah, I agree very much that these are some these developments are something new. We never expected, for example, a, a war in our neighborhood, in such a close neighborhood of, of the European Union and of our countries. So this is something new. Also, I think the Israeli-Palestinian conflict going to into a direction of, of maybe expanding to a war is also a very, very um, kind of unexpected development, though the tensions were always there. Uh, I think that these are really from our point of view, from the economics point of view, these are very important because they raise the importance of national security. Uh, and then we may have much more policy intervention into the economies, uh, sometimes uh, with real national, national security concerns, in other cases with the uh, disguise of national security concerns. So I expect that this will uh, have give the ground for more government intervention in many countries. And the other thing is that the supply shocks it may cause and the energy price peaks and so on. So it's again something we have to cope with. But when we take into account uh, new potential uh, supply shocks, do you think that a threat of, of a full-fledged uh, global recession is possible? Unfortunately, we cannot really rule that out. So this is this would be very unfortunate because we are now living in the in the period of shocks. First COVID, then Russia's invasion in Ukraine. Now this uh, Israeli-Palestinian conflict, which is really something we didn't expect. We thought that things cool down in this region. So there are so many extra economic shocks that uh, I would not rule out uh, a, a recession, though the international organizations, IMF, OECD, do not expect for next year uh, a substantial decrease in growth. Even they expect some increase compared to 2023 growth rates in, for example, our region. So, um, but I think this is something unexpected. They didn't take into account. The, it happened just a few days ago uh, in Israel, the, the Hamas attack, uh, which can cause, again, energy price um, peaks and other things which can, again, slow down the uh, economies in the world. So, um, so I think now the chances are higher due to that conflict that we have to face a recession. Thank you very much. Thank you.